Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Payan. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And today I will tell you where matrix multiplication comes from. I know you're used to this very weird formula for matrix multiplication, but I want to show you that it's one of the most natural things in the world. First of all, let me remind you what the formula is. So suppose, let's say you have, let's say a two by three matrix, and then a, I don't know, three by three matrix, and let's say I tell you, so this is A and this is B. And let's say I tell you, find, let's say, the 2 comma third entry of AB. So first of all, AB in this case, since this is 2 times 3, and this is 3 times 3, it should be a, a 2 times 3 matrix. And again, we'll see this will be very natural in a second. Uh, 2 times 3. And again, let's say for example, just improvising, this entry is one, two, three, and this entry is four, five, six. And I'm actually telling you, it doesn't matter what the other entries are. And let's say you want to find this entry here, the two comma third entry. Then all you do is simply, you take the second row of A and the, uh, I guess, second column of B, second row of A, it's in the third column of B, like something like that, and you dot it. So you get 1 times 4 <clears throat> plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 6. Let's see, so 18 plus 4, 22, uh, 32, no, almost my age, and you get the 2 comma third entry of AB. In particular, what is that saying? So in terms of formulas, the 2 comma 3 entry of AB, it's simply, again, the A of 2 comma 1 times B of, um, sorry, um, A of 2 comma 1 plus B of uh, 3 comma, no, of 1 comma 3. plus A of 2, 2, B of 2, 3, plus A of 3, 2, sorry, A of 2, 3, and B of uh, 3, 2, 3, 3. <laughs> now I get it, okay. And in fact, <coughs> This isn't too bad, it's actually just a very easy way to remember this because how do you do AB of 2, 3? It's just the sum. Notice those terms are always constant. 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3. So A of 2 comma something, B of something comma 3. And then notice those terms are always the same. A 2K, B K 3. And you're just summing up the indices from 1 up to 3, which I think here are just the number of uh, columns or something like that. So k, um, if you want k equals to 1 to p, where p is the number of columns of a. And so in general, we do have this formula. So in general, you should guess that the ij entry of a is just the sum of a i k b k j where k goes from 1 to p where again p is the number of columns of a and so let us derive this formula and again in terms of dynamic you can just think of canceling out those k's and we get a i j a b i j and as i said this is one of the most natural formulas in the world because, wow, wait, first of all, uh, oh, never mind. No, 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 they did change it. Okay, okay. They used to have two sliding blackboard whiteboards, but now they just have one. That's interesting. Okay, I haven't been there in a long time. But let me now tell you why, where this comes from. And it's really cool. It actually comes from composition of linear transformation. So here's a setup. 
Suppose, and again, unfortunately, there's a lot of notation here. Suppose we have two linear transformations, T and U. And you'll see why I put it in this order. T goes from a vector space V to a vector space W. And U goes from a vector space W to a vector space Z. And T, we'll see, is represented with a matrix B and U is represented with a matrix A. And it's, um, it seems the order is reversed, but don't worry, we'll get to this. Now, in order to define a matrix, we need bases. So let alpha be a basis of V, beta be a basis for W, and gamma be a basis of Z. So alpha, let's say, is made up of vectors V1 up to Vn, where n is the dimension of v, beta is made up of vectors w1 up to wp, and this p, just like I think number of columns of a, and gamma is a z1 up to zm. Again, that's a basis for v, basis of w, basis of z. Now, those are two linear transformations, T and U, and you may say, oh, this is a bit annoying because this is like having a layover when you want to fly, for example, from LA to Vienna. And I'm not rich enough to take a direct flight because it's like $2,000, but I always have to take a layover. But then the question is, is there a direct flight from V to Z? And in fact, there is, and it's called the composition, which is just UT. And no, not like University of Texas, it's just UT. And it seems it's the wrong order, but it's actually the right order because you read it from right to left. So you take X, then take T of X, and then U of T of X. So define. ut from v to z by ut of x equals u of t of x. And the question is, suppose t, b is a matrix of t, a is a matrix of u, well, we would like to have ut have matrix a, b. But the question is then, how can we define matrix multiplication such that this very natural property is true? Oh, for some, for you, with you writing this down, here it is. I will cover this in a second. So now, <laughs> although I'm sure you can just press pause and then it's also okay. Uh, and then you won't hear me talking, which is sad. Okay, so, so again, suppose T has matrix B, so suppose T has matrix B, which is, you can write it as a matrix from T, from alpha to beta, and remember, T goes from input to output, so here, what the size of B is just P times N, because N as its input, and then the other one is the output. So it is actually P times N. And U has matrix A, which is, you can write this, this, U from beta to gamma, and it turns out this matrix has size M by P. It seems it doesn't match, but it will match. And the question is how to define AB such that the matrix of UT is simply AB. 
I mean, it should be true, right? But the thing is, so far we haven't defined matrix multiplication. But the reason matrix multiplication is so weird is so that this natural property is true. So in other words, what we would like to have is that ut from alpha to gamma is u from beta to gamma times t alpha to gamma, uh, alpha to beta. So in particular, think of this as a little cancellation, and you do get a matrix from alpha to gamma. And in particular, here is why the sizes much match, <coughs> because remember u is m times p, t is p times m, well, ut should be m by n, and the reason those sizes should match is because in this picture, well, t goes from v to w, and u has to go from w to z. So if uh, the sizes don't match, it would mean t goes from one space to another space, and then u from completely other space to z, and then it wouldn't make sense to define the composition. Okay, so remember, we want this very nice property to be true. So, now let's, let's calculate the matrix of ut and see how we can define matrix multiplication so that this holds. So, and for this, remember how to define the matrix of a linear transformation. All you do is you take the basis vectors of your input, evaluate your linear transformation, and you uh, express it in terms of the basis vectors of the output. So here for ut, I erase this, the input basis is the alphas, so you know, the basis of V, and the output basis is the basis of Z, which is the output vectors. So, on the one hand, for all J from 1 to N, by definition, UT of VJ, and how do you find the matrix of a linear transformation? If you apply ut at every basis vector and you somehow can express it in terms of the output basis vectors, so let's say sum from i from 1 to m of something zi, then those some things are precisely the entries of your matrix. That would be then ab times ij. It seems very weird, but it makes sense because this is, remember how to find the matrix of a linear transformation. You calculate ut of vj, and you express it in terms of your output basis, which is zi, and those entries of the columns, so ab 1j, and then ab something j, I think, uh, uh, mj, mj and then a, b, i, j, those will be your entries of your matrix a, b. So it just, matrix multiplication just boils down to finding a different way of expressing this. But what way? So this is, I think, the most exciting part of uh, today. On the other hand, well, u, t, v, j, no, well, this is u of t of vj. And this is good because remember, t has a matrix B, so we can express t of vj in terms of your matrix B. So by definition of the matrix of G, of B, by definition of B, this just means that t of vj, you can write this in terms of your intermediary basis, so k from 1 to p, and then uh, something wk, what is that something? It's simply the uh, kj entry of b. So b kj, and again, the way to remember this is those two things have to match. 
those two things have to match. Or you can just think of, well, you're evaluating T of Vj, so J is fixed, the column is fixed, and you're just summing it up along the rows. So you have to sum it with this dummy variable. And then the point is, all those are constants. So the sum is constant, this is constant. So basically, because U is linear, you can put U inside. So let me, let me continue over there here. So this equals to the sum from K from 1 to P of B of KJ. U of WK. Okay. But what does that mean? It means that we're evaluating U at the basis vectors of W. Which means we can use again the matrix of U, which in this case is A. So by definition, this is sum from K from 1 to P, B of KJ. And then this sucker, you can write it in terms of the matrix of A, which is sum from I, from 1 to M, of A, I, K, Z, I. Again, K, the K column is fixed, and you're summing it up along the rows, and then we are almost done. Again, I would like to use the same uh, board. So, if you just pull out this sum here, then you get sum from k from 1 to p, sum from i equals 1 to m of b of kj, a of ik, zi. And notice the similarity, we're almost done, but you see here the left hand side is a sum over i, so not a problem, let's fubini that. And it's okay because we have finite sums. So let's interchange this sum. This is sum from 1 to m, sum from k equals 1 to p of, and again, let's just for the hell of it, interchange that, a i k d k j z i. And let's put some cute parentheses. And why is that important? Because... Remember what I told you, if somehow you can write ut of vj in terms of your zi's, then it gives you the i chain entry of ab. But we precisely did that. We wrote ut of vj equals to junk, 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 bs, blah, 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 equals this term sum over zi. So in other words, the ijth entry of AB, IJ, it's simply the sum from K from 1 to P of AIK, BKJ. And this is why you have this weird formula for the... Uh, uh, matrix multiplication, it's because you want it to be in keeping with uh, composition of linear transformations. And in particular, what I find really cute about this is uh, why isn't it always true that AB equals BA? So I made another video at some point showing that AB is not BA. I remember first time I saw this, I was like Pikachu. I was like, oh! <laughs> But it actually makes sense because in general, uh, matrix multiplication doesn't commute. So ut in general is not equal to tu. So personally, I find this to be obvious, but I shouldn't be shocked by this because essentially they're saying the same thing. All right, so I hope you are enlightened. And if you want to see more math and more linear algebra, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.